Editor-in-Chief Speaks. Hello everybody, this is Nia Pierce, Editor-in-Chief at SheAttack.com and this is going to be another episode of EIC Speaks. So the way that I'm going to structure this video is I'm going to state a fact about the Nintendo Switch and then I'm going to discuss the theory that I have surrounding this fact. I apologize in advance, I am sick today, so if my voice seems a little weird, it's because I'm trying my best not to strain my voice too much. Fact. The Nintendo Switch is a home console handheld hybrid. That means that no matter what type of gamer you are, this console will suit your needs, hypothetically. If you don't game outside of your house, leave it docked. If you travel and move around a lot, take it with you. This time around, the gimmick is choice and freedom. Whereas in the past, Nintendo's gimmick hindered the overall player's experience. For example, with the Wii U, the second screen functionality was forced on you. Whereas with the Switch, it's not. The gimmick makes sense because the gimmick is essentially play how you want. Theory. The Nintendo Switch being a hybrid could possibly mean the end of long game droughts as Nintendo will focus on one singular device versus two. Back in 2013 or 14, Nintendo merged both their handheld and their console development teams. I'm assuming it was because of what we now know is the Nintendo Switch. If this is the case, this means there will be a higher chance for Nintendo's exclusives to be released more frequently. This means that we will have, hypothetically, no more Wii U level droughts. So even if, let's say, third party developers find that developing for the Nintendo Switch isn't for them, which I hope is not the case, Nintendo's own games could be enough to keep the Nintendo Switch players entertained when paired with a gaming rig or other console. But let's be honest guys, as cool as the Nintendo Switch looks, it will likely be another companion console, which has been Nintendo's MO since the Nintendo 64. However, I'm hoping that Nintendo learns from their previous mistakes and helps the third party developers sell their games on their device. If we're to go by the preview trailer, Nintendo will have to get people not only excited for their hardware and their games, but the library itself as a whole, which also includes third party games. Fact. Nintendo Switch will be using cartridges. This means that Nintendo wants to bring back the focus on plug and play, a convenience factor that consoles have shied away from in current time. Consoles today have been so focused on being baby PCs that they've been losing out on the biggest convenience of what makes a console great, plugging it in and playing it immediately with no long install times. Theory. The Nintendo Switch will likely have very low onboard memory due to not only Nintendo's history, but an attempt on keeping the price low and what rumors have been saying. However, I think it's likely that the Nintendo Switch would also have a cloud storage component based on some patents that we've seen in the past and some mumblings about what DNA's partnership will bring to Nintendo's devices. The cloud gaming component could be likely part of DNA's position in all of this and could be how they plan to implement virtual console gaming, Wii U and 3DS backward compatibility, and the storing of games that do not fit on the console's onboard memory. Fact. Nintendo Switch boasts a large list of third-party partners. Theory. My theory is that Nintendo may not get all third-party multiplats, but it will get some along the lines of GameCube level support. I don't expect overwhelming support because I'm assuming that Nintendo has sacrificed power for freedom. Based on the fact that they have sacrificed power for freedom, I'm assuming that the tablet itself will probably, probably be around Xbox One tier in regards to graphics fidelity. Based on the rumors and the size of the tablet, I feel like this could be good enough, but probably not preferred considering that the Scorpio and the PS4 Pro are right around the corner. Fact. 
There were no children or families in the Switch preview trailer. Theory. Based on what we saw from the preview trailer, Nintendo is targeting their adult audience this go round. If you noticed, there were no families nor children in the reveal trailer. I think that since the preview kicked it off this way, it could potentially be a trend with Nintendo and the way that they plan on messaging this system. I do think that down the line they will market to children for games that make sense, like in the case with Mario or maybe even Splatoon, but I see the messaging for the Nintendo Switch more of a return to the Wii era marketing, with young adults showing the idea of the system and how it could be fun for all users. In my opinion, this is a very brilliant way to message and market a system for Nintendo. I also think that although they will target adults this time, the games we see from Nintendo will remain the same. We will see more Mario, Zelda, and Pikmin, and other typical games we usually see from Nintendo. This isn't a bad thing though, because I love those games. But I do think that Nintendo will still keep who they are at the core in the way that they make their games. Fact. The Nintendo Switch is powered by NVIDIA and is based off of Tegra architecture. Theory. My theory is that the Switch is going to be pseudo-modular. Either the docking base, which transmits the picture to the TV, will act as a supplemental computing device, or the Nintendo Switch tablet will be interchangeable. This means that if Nintendo ever chose to, they could always release another, more powerful tablet to keep up with the quickly evolving tech market. The Nintendo Switch removes the set box of a typical console. This means that upgrading the Switch could effectively be as simple as changing your graphics card. I'm also theorizing that since Nvidia is the driving force behind the Nintendo Switch's technology, there will be some Nvidia tablet influence that could lead to features like Nvidia Game Stream, Nvidia's Remote Play from PC service, and even Shadow Play. NVIDIA's live streaming and gameplay recording service. In closing, as far as my personal opinion is concerned, I'm still on the fence until Nintendo shows us the launch window library. I think the Switch could be a win-win for most gamers due to the freedom it promises, but it also rests solely in Nintendo's hands and if they play their cards right. I also think that it's smart that Nintendo is playing on their strengths mobile, and also them knowing who buys their devices the most, their handheld fan base. I think they found a way to satisfy their handheld fan base without stepping on the toes of their home console users like myself. With the Nintendo Switch, it's going to essentially appeal to people who love the 3DS but hated the Wii U. All of these theories that I have discussed today have been solely based on my opinion as well as patents or actual real things that have been going on with Nintendo over the past five years. Discuss with me what you think the Nintendo Switch would have under the hood, any concerns that you might have, or things that I might have missed altogether in this video. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll talk to you later. Peace.